Hello everyone, thanks for joining us for Tell Us Our English. I'm Cody Weddle and this is From the South. We begin today in Orlando, Florida. We now know that over 50 people, rather 50 people, are dead after a shooter opened fire on a gay bar there in Sunday morning. That makes it the deadliest shooting in U.S. history. 53 people were injured in that shooting as well. Police eventually raided the building, killing the shooter. Vigils have taken place really across the world. We're now, we, we now take a look at some of those photos from the United States. And in trying to unravel the motives behind the attack, the mainstream press quickly highlighted the killer, Omar Mateen's Muslim faith and potential ties to the Islamic State group. Little attention was paid to the fact that this was in fact a hate crime clearly targeting the LGBT community. U.S. President Barack Obama dubbed the attack an act of terror and an act of hate. Investigators have tried to probe deeper into the killer's specific motives. The FBI has admitted that they interviewed Omar Mateen after he made comments to co-workers alleged, alleging possible terrorist ties in 2013. He was also interviewed again in 2014 due to a possible link to an American suicide bomber. And in news from Latin America now, we turn to Mexico. That's where members of the CNTE Teachers Union clashed with the police Sunday in Oaxaca, Mexico. After police forcibly evicted teachers from a public square, Mexican authorities detained two of the group's leaders. Now the CNTE Teachers Union has demanded the immediate return of those leaders. Also in Mexico, a funeral was held Sunday in a remote mountain village. It comes after gunmen massacred 11 members of the same family on Friday. It happened in El Mirador, a community in central Puebla state near Oaxaca. Peruvians finally know who their next president will be. Pedro Pablo Kuczynski was declared the president-elect late last week after an extremely tight race against his rival Keiko Fujimori. But who is Kuczynski and exactly how will he govern there in Peru? For more now, we turn to our correspondent, Raul Mora. The president-elect of Peru, Pedro Pablo Kuczynski, is better known by his initials, PPK, or as El Gringo, in reference to his U.S. nationality. The son of European immigrants, he has spent a great deal of his life outside of Peru. He attended boarding school in England and received a bachelor's degree from Oxford and a master's degree from Princeton. He returned to Peru in 1967 to work at a national reserve bank. But when a popular leftist military government took power, PPK was accused of derailing $115 million to benefit the transnational petroleum company. He escaped in 1969 as an exile to the U.S. I was jailed and I left the country during the military government. In the U.S. he worked for institutions such as the World Bank and the IMF. He returned to Peru briefly in 1980 to become Minister of Energy and Mines. In this post he led privatization of national companies. After his term as minister, he left Peru once more and worked as a director of various banks and large companies. When I was a minister of Belaunde, it was a very difficult time and I had a good offer outside of the country. Meanwhile in Peru, Alberto Fujimori became an authoritarian head of state. It wasn't until democracy was restored in 2002 that PPK returned, this time as Prime Minister under President Alejandro Toledo. While in government, PPK handled the concessions of one of the most productive natural gas fields in the country to a U.S. company, for which he previously worked as an advisor. Lot 56 was an issue of a concession where there were four companies involved. Three of them desisted. The one that stayed negotiated according to the law of hydrocarbons with the government at that time. PPK is also known for his pro-business publications. In 2003, he co-edited an influential book with John Williamson, the author of the Washington Consensus. Despite the failures of the market economy and privatization in Latin America, 
PPK has defended these policies in his writings. If you are poor uh, fiscally, then you're going to have to have the, 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 the private sector do it. Kuczynski ran for president in 2011. However, he was unsuccessful due to criticism of his U.S. nationality and his history serving multinationals. In 2016, he was narrowly able to make it to the second round of elections, but this time he had to quit the boards of more than 14 corporations and renounce to his U.S. nationality. He also rallied the support of those 45% of Peruvians who reject the return of an authoritarian regime under the banner of Fujimorismo. We despise dictatorship and love dialogue. Venezuelan opposition leader Enrique Capriles Radonsky met with the Argentinian president Mauricio Macri in Argentina on Monday. Now, Capriles' visit with Macri is part of a whirlwind three country tour. He's going to try to push arguments for the invoking of the Organization of American States Democratic Charter against Venezuela, which could lead to the country's suspension from the group. Now, the issue is to be discussed this week in the OAS. Activists in Argentina protested Capriles' visits with President Macri. At least nine people were wounded after a car bomb exploded in the province of Tunceli, Turkey. Now, according to security sources there, the incident took place near a housing block for civil servants working at a uh, working in a local courthouse. It was not immediately clear who carried out that attack. NATO is set to deploy four international battalions to Poland and the three Baltic states as part of the wider push back against Russia's intervention in Ukraine. Based on uh, the advice uh, of our military planners, we will agree to deploy by rotation four robust multinational battalions in the Baltic states and in Poland. This will send a clear signal that NATO stands ready to defend any ally. Iraqi forces have detained over 500 suspected Islamic State group members who were trying to sneak out of the city of Fallujah. The militants allegedly tried to blend in with fleeing civilians there. However, the participation of militias in the siege of Fallujah who are fighting alongside the Iraqi army has raised fears of sectarian killings there. And a Canadian held by the Islamist militant group Abu Sayyaf in the Philippines has been executed. Robert Hall was kidnapped in September 2015 along with three other hostages from Canada, the Philippines and Norway. Hall was reportedly executed after a ransom deadline was not met. The Jewish community has made calls for massive break-ins into the al Atska mosque compound during the month of Ramadan. Noor Harazin now from the region reports. Students with a number of extremist Jewish settlers groups called for a massive break-ins into the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound Monday morning to mark the Jewish Shavuot holiday celebrated annually from June 11 to 13. The call comes one day after about 140 Jewish settlers stormed the complex and performed Talmudic rituals under the protection of Israeli police forces. Police arrested four guards of the Al-Aqsa Mosque who, as a part of their duty, tried to stop the settlers from breaking into the holy site. According to a 1967 agreement, only Muslim Palestinians are allowed in the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound, while Jewish prayer is allowed at the Western Wall. Al-Aqsa is located in East Jerusalem, a part of the internationally recognized Palestinian territories. The compound houses both the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa Mosque, and it is the third holiest site in Islam. Guards and employees at the mosque are subjected to systemic Israeli harassment and detention on a daily basis. Palestinian officials said that incursions were intended to provoke the feelings of Muslims during the holy month of Ramadan. 
All these incursions are Israeli attempts to impose a de facto policy at the Alaska Mosque compound in order to divide it between Muslims and Jews. The Israeli terrorism against the Palestinian people and their holy sites represents a motive for Palestinians to carry out more resistance operations. The Tel Aviv attack just reaffirms Palestinian rejection of the Israeli occupation and that they want to get rid of it. Palestinian activists have called for intensifying Muslim presence at the holy compound in order to defend it against discretion plans. The site has seen escalating unrest between Palestinian protesters and Israeli settlers since the third uprising broke out across the occupied territories in October 2015. Nuhar Zain TV, Palestine. South African Paralympic athlete Oscar Pistorius appeared in court on Monday to attend his sentence hearing for the murder of his girlfriend in 2013. Now Pistorius faces a minimum 15-year jail term for that murder, uh, but his sentence could be reduced due to time already spent in prison and mitigating factors. The hearing is expected to last until Friday. His condition, according to you, is Paintings that were stolen by armed robbers from the Castel Vecchio Museum in Verona in 2015 have been put on display in Kiev. Now the paintings, which are estimated to be worth sure. over $18 million, were recovered by Ukrainian law enforcement authorities. Uh, the artwork will be um, the artwork the artwork will be handed over to Italy later this year. And that's what we're covering on this Monday. Thanks so much for joining us. Plenty more on all of those stories and others at our website, telesertv.net slash English. Be sure to join us on social media as well. We'll see you right back here tomorrow for Telesert English. I'm Cody Weddle.